All right, everybody, so this is um, the next video, which is dealing with uh, Kirchhoff's laws and combination circuits. Um, so Kirchhoff's laws are just rules that will help you kind of uh, solve circuit problems. So um, they're based on two different conservation laws, which we'll get to in a second. But the first law is just called a junction uh, rule. And we sort of talked about this when we were talking about parallel circuits. Uh, a junction is a place where the current um, comes together or splits. So like in this diagram here that I'm drawing a circle here, that black dot, that's a junction because the, the current that's leaving the battery is going into that spot. Uh, and then part of it goes along one path and part of it goes on the other. So it's splitting at that moment. And if you look, uh, I measured the current before it gets to the junction to be 1.25 uh, amps. Uh, then I measured the current that went through this top part uh, through here uh, to be 0.25. And then the current to go across this a horizontal path to be one. So if we look at uh, the current, uh, the current into the junction equals the current out of the junction. So it's 0.25 plus one will get me 1.25. So it's a pretty simple uh, statement. It's just like whatever goes in has to come out. So it's conservation of matter essentially, and this is conservation of uh, the electrical particles. So that's what that is. Um, the second rule is a little more confusing. It's called Kirchhoff's loop rule. Um, and uh, basically what it says is the sum of the, the change in potentials around any closed path is zero. So, um, so this is one closed path that we have here. Um, and you can start at any point. So I started here at this bottom left corner uh, of the circuit. So if you imagine um, having the uh, multimeter, which uh, is that uh, box that measures kind of voltage or amperage. And um, I put the two probes at the same point. If I put the two probes on the multimeter, it would tell me zero because we're not measuring any difference because we're at the same exact spot. So what it's saying is if we make a path going around a circuit, and they call that a loop, um, when you make a path, whatever you, uh, whenever you get back to the same point, you have to be back to zero. Otherwise, um, you wouldn't have uh, conserved uh, the potential. Um, and that would mean that you had somehow created or destroyed energy, which doesn't work. So this is a conservation of energy uh, type idea. So um, the way that I like to think about this is the voltage gains are equal to the voltage drops. So um, generally you gain from batteries uh, and you drop when you use up the electrical energy or the electrical energy is being used to power something. So that's your resistors. So if you look at this circuit, the way that it's um, set up, uh, we have a battery here. So it's providing a voltage, which they call voltage one. Um, I drew the positives and negatives on the terminals just to make sure that you understood uh, the positive side and the negative side again. Um, then as we go around, so like we can start here and we can say, okay, when we go across this battery, we're gonna gain uh, voltage. So that'd be that piece. Um, when we get to a resistor, um, we're gonna lose voltage. So when the current goes across here, we're losing uh, voltage and V equals IR is uh, Ohm's law. So this is the one current, since there's only one path, there's one current going through each resistor. So this would be R1. So it would lose some of the energy um, as it progressed through R1. It would continue, go through R2, the current goes through R2, and it loses some more energy. Now this one is the confusing one. It's, it's like the battery again, this is another battery, but it's wired the opposite way. So I don't know why somebody would do this, um, but as you go across this battery, you end up on the negative side. So that's a voltage drop again. So these are all voltage drops, and there's one more voltage drop, and we get across R3, um, because again, you lose the energy or the energy gets used up as you're going, um, across a resistor, so that's the third one, and uh, that totals to zero. That is the statement. So you just kind of make these loops and you make your path, and when you end up on the positive side of a battery, that's a positive gain, um, and then if you end up uh, across any resistor, that's gonna be a loss. So again, it's kind of the voltage gains equals the voltage drops, and uh, we use Ohm's law a lot, or IR. Um, Ohm's, or Kirchhoff's rules are useful. You can apply them to any circuit. Um, they're mostly used in multi-battery circuits, so something with multiple batteries. Uh, this is like a person was not very smart wiring this because it doesn't make sense how they have it. So, um, But again, Kirchhoff's first rule, uh, the junction rule, deals with conservation of charge. And then the second rule deals with conservation of energy. So again, uh, conservation of charge because whatever goes into the junction has to come out. And then conservation of energy because it's talking about um, a little you know, electric potential, which is related to potential energy. So the potential energy, if you're measuring at the same point, so if this is our loop, 
um, if you're measuring the same point, then that there is no difference. So the change in voltage at that point is zero. So when you make your way around the path and you get back to where you started, um, it has to be zero. So that closed path has to work that way. And it doesn't matter what type of uh, elements are in the circuit. So we got batteries, resistors, capacitors. We're going to learn about inductors later on. So, um, so here is an example uh, similar to the one that we just had. And um, I want you guys to try to figure out, um, using Kirchhoff's rule, uh, the current in the circuit um, and the voltage drop across each of the resistors and then the power. So we're going to do all three of those things. So um, again, let's just start our loop. So the first thing you need to do when you start your loops um, is determine which way you think the current's going to move. So we have two batteries, and again, they're wired in reverse direction. Um, which one's stronger? So is 6 volts stronger or 12 volts stronger? So uh, 12 volts is bigger, so I would say that the current is going to flow in the direction that the 12 volts is pushing. So it's going to go like this. So if that's our direction of our loop, and let's just say we start here at the bottom, um, and we go across. So the first thing we go across uh, is a 12 volt gain. So we are plus 12 uh, from the battery. All right, And then uh, we have our current, which we'll just call I because we only have one current because there's only one path as a series circuit, um, is going across this resistor. So it would be, uh, we would lose some voltage here. So it would be minus I times whatever the resistance is. Uh, and the resistor in that one is 12. Then the next one we come to is uh, the 6 ohm resistor. So we would subtract off I times 6. Because again, we're just using uh, Ohm's law B equals IR. And then, uh, then we get to this battery, but we end up on the negative side of the battery, so that's a loss of 6 volts. And then we get to our last 6 ohm resistor, uh, so it's going to be a repeat of the current I times uh, that resistance of 6. And uh, when we do, we get back to where we started, so we stop there, and we should say that equals 0. So we're going to use uh, just algebra and solve for I. Um, so 12 minus 6 is 6. And then if we add all these i's up, we're going to subtract off i, and then we have 12 and 6 and 6, so that's 24 i's. So I can set that equal to 0 still, and then solve for uh, i. So I would have 6 uh, equals 24 i, and then I'm going to divide through by 24. And when I do that, I get the current in the circuit to be 0.25 amps. So that is how much current goes through this uh, circuit. So the next thing is to figure out the voltage of each piece. So for the voltages, all I would do is I would take 0.25 and put it in here. So if I do uh, 0.25 times 12, uh, a quarter of 12 is 3. So that's 3 volts. Uh, I could do uh, 0.25 times uh, 6. So if a quarter of 12 is 3, then a quarter of 6 is 1.5. And we actually do that twice. So 1.5 and 1.5. So if we were writing this out kind of down here with these numbers, it would be, uh, to check it, it would be 12 minus 3 um, minus 1.5. And we've done kind of, we gain 12 minus 3, minus 1.5. We're going to minus 6 because that's the battery. Uh, that's wired the wrong way. And then another minus 1.5. And if we did that properly and we got the right answer, when we add all those up, it should be equal to 0, and it does check out. So we found the voltage for each of these pieces as well. Um, the last thing is just to do the power. So power is just I times V, so we can do this uh, for each one. So it's just the current times the voltage. So the current going through each piece is still 0.25 because there's only one. Um, uh, current, and then uh, if we multiply that by, oh, it's not 6 volts, sorry. Uh, we multiply that by the 3 volts in the 12 ohms. So that's like uh, 0.75 watts. Um, for the next one, for the 0.25 uh, times 1.5, um, it's because this is half, it's going to be half as much. So I think it's 0.375 watts. And we have that twice. So like we have the 0.375 is used up in this resistor, and it's also used up in that one. 
So uh, just kind of a basic example with some Kirchhoff's ideas involved. All right, so that leads us into um, series circuits, I'm sorry, combination circuits. Uh, and, and combination circuits are when uh, it's not quite series and it's not quite parallel. So it's not a purely series setup and it's not a purely parallel setup. So if you look at this, um, if you track kind of the electricity, uh, if the electricity leaves the battery and makes its way through the different resistors, uh, it's going to get to a point and it's a junction. So, um, so it goes through this, the total current goes through this resistor A, then it gets to the junction and it splits. So part of the current is going to go uh, kind of in the top path up here across RB, and then part of the circuit uh, is going to, or part of the current is going to go along this bottom path uh, where it has resistors C and D in it. And then finally it comes back together. Uh, and it would join back together and we'd get back to uh, the battery. So that is our path uh, or our circuit. We have two paths, so we have two loops. You could think about it that way. Um, and um, this is not purely series because not everything's in a line, but it's not purely parallel either because like there are elements that are in series and elements that are in parallel. So these are a little bit more complicated, uh, but you still apply the same rules. You just like basically break up a section uh, into a series section or a parallel section. So uh, the first step in solving these is to identify the resistors that are in series. So the resistors are in series uh, and you combine them together to make a simpler diagram. So you're gonna like redraw these pictures out. Um, so what I would say is what are the resistors that are in series? Let me ask you that question. So um, the, the two that look most obviously in series to me are C and D. And I did this with colors on purpose so you could see like, yeah, the same current goes through C and D. Those are the only two that have the same color current going through them because this is like a blue current, this is a red current. The green goes through both of those. So those have to be in series. So if we take a series and combine them and series resistors, you just add. So um, if resistor uh, C is one ohm and resistor D is one ohm, you're gonna add them together to get two ohms. So I just redrew the picture and I've replaced uh, R C and R D with resistor R C D. So uh, so we have this setup now. So resistor A is still two, resistor B is still two, and now resistor C D uh, is two. It doesn't look like we have anything else in series there. So the next step is to go through and figure out what's in parallel. So uh, at looking at this setup uh, with A B and resistor C D, uh, what two resistors are in parallel? So let me ask you that question. And uh, hopefully you picked um, the resistors um, C, D, and B. And for those, you do the um, resistors in parallel rule where you invert the um, resistances. So they're both two, so it'd be one over two plus one over two um, added together, which would get you one, and then you inverse it. So that's still gonna get you one. So uh, our B, C, D, when we take those two and put them together and get an equivalent resistor, it would just be equal to one. So we have a one ohm resistor there. And then you just basically repeat this process over and over again until you get down to um, the simplest possible circuit. So if we continue, um, once we've uh, redrawn, um, so if I, if I redrew this, like these are obviously in series now because there's only one path, so we can combine them um, and we'll get um, this uh, set up. So uh, resistor A was worth two, resistor B, C, D was worth one. When we add them together, we get three. So we have our resistor is equal to three ohms and it's hooked up to a 12 volt battery. From there, we can use Ohm's law uh, and figure out what is the current that leaves the battery. So um, if we do V equals IR for the totals, that'll get us that. So that's what I said to do here. I did it already, so I won't use my handwriting. So the battery voltage is 12, the total current is what we're solving for, the total resistance is 3, so it would be 12 divided by 3, so you get 4 amps. So um, then um, you're going to use uh, the ideas that we just did, so like we're going to use these pictures that we just went through and kind of work backwards. So um, if we have uh, 4 amps of current going through A, or leaving the battery, it goes through A and it goes through B, C, D, right? So this is four amps. Um, and when we know the resistance of A and the amperage of A, we can figure out what the, um, what the voltage is across A. So um, continuing on with that, um, I would say uh, resistor, the equivalent resistance in series was A plus B, C, D. They're all equal to four. So that gives me my, res my current for A is four, and then I just use Ohm's law. So four times two would get me eight for the voltage. 
Um, I could also solve for the voltage of BCD, which is also helpful. So BCD um, is IBCD times RBCD, so four times one gets me four. If we think about that, um, oops. if we think about this uh, circuit, um, if this voltage is eight and this voltage is four, it should add up to 12 because that's the loop rule, and it does. So we have um, four volts um, across uh, the other piece. So uh, that's that's kind of just a Kirchhoff's check along the way. So then we kind of work back another step. So coming back, for, we're going to go from uh, this picture uh, down here. We're going to go back to this one. So um, we said that uh, resistors B and CD were in parallel, so we're going to use the parallel rules. So the parallel rule says that when things are in parallel, the voltages are the same. So when the voltages are the same, that means that the voltage of B is equal to the voltage of CD, which is also equal to the voltage of BCD, which replaced it, so that's four. Um, so since we know now the voltage and we know the resistance of each one, we can get the current. So, um, sorry. So, let's get rid of that. So the voltage, I'm sorry, the voltage of B was four and the current, or the resistance of B was two, so four divided by two gives me two. Uh, so that's, that's just using Ohm's law again. So I, I need four and two and I can get two. And then for CD, CD is the same setup. It's four divided by two, so we get two amps. So two amps, coming back to this. So we, when we, we track everything out, and I drew this out, uh, we said we had uh, four amps leaving the battery. Uh, it gets here and two amps goes through B and two amps is going to go through uh, this green path down here on the bottom. So if two amps goes uh, through this piece, it's the same again because it's in series. So two amps goes through each one of those. So once you have that piece of information, and it's, this is called working backwards, that's the way I describe it, um, then you can you can keep going. So um, delete that. So since C, D is, in ser is, is replacing C and D, which are in series, uh, the currents are all the same. Once you know the currents, you can solve for the voltages. So we can figure out the rest of these. Again, Ohm's law is the, the way that you go to find these items. Um, so just to conclude, kind of we can check our answers with the, the junction rules and the loop rules to make sure we're good. So um, like I mentioned just a second ago, um, we had four amps of current going in, and we said that when it split, it went into two amps, and uh, this bottom one was also two amps. So uh, it makes sense that the junction rule works because um, four is equal to two plus two, or you could say two plus two equals four, and that's the junction rule. It's conservation of um, matter. For the loop rules, you can do two different loops. So the first loop that I drew um, going here um, goes along the upper path. So if I started, on, I'll retrace it. So if I go up from the battery and through RA and then through this upper path and down, um, that's going to be loop one. Um, so if I do that, uh, let's just move this box because I have it typed out. Um, let's, let's fill in the missing pieces. So I gain 12. Like if I started here, I gained 12 going across the battery. And then uh, we got to figure out what the, the drop's going to be. So we said in this piece, there's four amps of current. So this is a four for I. And it goes across a two ohm resistor. So that's two. So uh, again, we're just using uh, V equals IR. So four times two there. The next piece that it goes through is up here in B. So this was like the voltage of A. The next piece is voltage B. So it's got two amps um, going through two ohms because we said IB was two. Uh, oh, yeah. So that's fine. I think I wrote it on the wrong spot, so that may be where I'm a little confused. I think I'm writing it in the wrong. It's okay. Uh, so this would be two times two. Uh, so, uh, and I'm not going to worry about this piece for right now. So it would be 12 minus eight minus four should get us back to zero because if we follow that upper path, we get back to the corner and we're back at zero and that makes sense because 12 minus four Minus eight gets me zero. If we do the same thing on the other path, it's the same kind of idea. It's just we have multiple uh, ideas. So it's 12 minus um, the same four times two. And that's the voltage of A. Um, and then we have both of these res resistors. So resistor C would be two times one. 
and then we'd have another 2 times 1. And that should be 0. So 2 times 1, 2 times 1, they're both 2 ohm resistors, or I'm sorry, 1 ohm resistors, but they have 2 amps of current going through them. So it would be um, 12 minus 8 uh, minus 2, because 2 times 1 is 2, minus another 2 times 1 is 2, uh, and that also equals 0. So they both check out, they both work. If you didn't do things the right way, it would not follow those rules. So, um, so again, those are the kind of more complicated resistor-based uh, circuits where you have multiple resistors in uh, combination. Uh, and then Coulomb's, or I'm sorry, Kirchhoff's rules are another way that you can uh, approach the um, those types of problems when it's not purely series or purely parallel, when you have to do some analysis and figure out voltage and current and uh, resistance and power. So I'll stop there. Um, have a good one, guys, and talk to you later.